Green is the new gold. Our 18-hole Niklaus design, award-winning golf course and clubhouse will leave you green with envy. We don't just say, we do. It's the Stain City way. Hello and welcome to Real Talk with me, Anel M. Doda. So thank you so much for joining us yesterday for our first ever live show. Thank you for your tweets. They absolutely made my day. So a little later in the show, I'll be joined by the lovely Nandi Madida. Yeah, you're wondering who that is, right? Remember she got married, Nandi Ngoma became Nandi Madida. Yes, her pretty face, good hairstyle. She's in the lineup for a little bit later, but first, it's been hard to ignore. It's been everyone's conversation on social media, in your house, in the offices. It has been dominated by the economic state of the country. Yesterday, ratings agency Standard & Poor's catapulted us into a state of confusion, junk status. That's downgraded to a double B plus rating. But what does it mean exactly? You see, I know, that's exactly what you're asking me. And how does it affect your pocket? To help us understand, I'm joined by asset manager Peter Armitage, who's an actual expert, and not all of you guys, they're on social media busy sending doom and gloom status updates. So somebody did put it well to me though, they said that the country needs a cup of warm sugar water, because you know when you're in shock, you just need sugar water to calm down. Do you think we need sugar water? Yeah, I think in times like these, we've tended to uh, create panic by ourselves in the country every few years. Uh -huh. um, and typically, we kind of work it through. I think there's, uh, I, th I think we need a reaction to what's happened uh, in the finance ministry. Uh -huh. um, and you're seeing a lot of people um, come up against it. Civil society is, uh -huh. uh, is acting, and I think we'll work out a solution. I think uh, we had to be positive. Um, is this the first time we've been downgraded, though? So we've had uh, investment grade status for the last 20 years. Which means what? So which, uh, what it basically means, it's a bit like you go to the bank, uh -huh. uh, you want to borrow some money and they go, you're not such a great credit risk, you're going to spend too much on your hair and your dress, so they <laughs> charge you a lot of money for your debt. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're good credit, you'll get a lower interest rate. And what it's doing, it's global rating agencies. South Africa always needs to borrow money from the rest of the world. Yes. And it's saying to the rest of the world, basically, if you lend money to South Africa, they're a much bigger risk than we thought they were before. Uh -huh. So you have to charge them higher rates. And that's typically what it means. So South Africa's got a huge interest bill every year. Okay. In excess of 20, 30 billion rand a year. And money will cost us more money. Uh -huh. uh, borrowing money will cost us more. But what's more worrying than the actual status is the statement, and they're saying they could downgrade us further. And the other two rating agencies have still got to come through. And the reasons that they give, they're concerned that the, the state coffers are, are not going to be as responsibly managed. Okay. Um, and that the economics of the country can get in a mess, effectively, is what they're saying. So that's when, because it was a bit confusing for me when people were reporting we've been downgraded. And some people were like, no, we're still under review. So us being under review is the, the other two that we So there's we're three of them. Okay. There's Standard & Poor's, Moody's and Fitch. And, and both of the other two will make a decision in the next few weeks. Okay, and these guys, these three guys, they're the ones that people who would loan us money, they're the people that everyone listens to. They go and say, tell us about that country and what the risk is. Oh. Now, a worrying thing is if, if two out of the three oh, downgrade same. us, then we actually get taken out of indexes around the world. So what that means is certain people won't be allowed to lend us money. Okay. So basically, what, you know, for, from the rest of the world's perspective, we oh. become a riskier place to invest. Um, and risk really means about not getting your money paid back. Oh. So every now and then a country gets into a downward spiral and it can't actually pay the foreign investors back their money. Um, and that's the concern. Okay, so now that's very highbrow. Like, that's like, <laughs> let, let's say I am living in a one-bedroom house. I've just graduated. I just got my job. I am earning, I'm taking home 17000 after tax. Uh, what does it mean for me? So what it means, you won't feel anything right away. Okay. But what it means is the economic direction of the country is going, uh, going the wrong way. Mm. And if, if it will generally mean the RAND will continue to weaken, uh -huh. which means imported stuff costs more. Uh -huh. It'll mean our inflation goes up. Uh -huh. It'll mean interest rates go up. Uh -huh. So effectively, you'll pay more on your bond. Okay. Um, you'll pay more for anything that's imported. 
Um, and, and generally, the, the economic growth will tend to be low in those circumstances. So, so first of all, your ability to get a job will be limited. Uh, uh, and and we, when the government talks about the transformation agenda and financing that and social grants, the yeah. government will have less money to do all of that. So in a way... So there'll never be an increase, say, in pensioners' money. Yeah, and, and as a result, I mean, what's happened, uh, you know, as bonds go up, so yeah. you invest in shares or cash or bonds, mm. the bonds have come down a hell of a lot. So your pension fund mm. um, over the course of the last week has come down in value. So who is more affected by this? Is it the very, very poor or the very, very rich? Ultimately, the very, very poor get much, uh, much more worse, worsely affected. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the very, very rich, it impacts their revenue, their but ultimately they've got enough money. And their house in France. You know, poor, <laughs> yeah, poor people, you know, the, the price of basic items going up has much more of an impact on their daily lifestyle than it does for, for very rich people. So, I mean, I know we've got a petrol increase today. That's obviously has got nothing to do with it because those are determined uh, ahead of time. So w will this thing affect things like petrol and bread and eggs so, and milk? So the reason it will is that if we continue to go down the path that we're, we're going, the currency will weaken uh -huh. and all of that stuff will become more expensive. Um, so inflation will go up, people will have to put their prices up. It's basically the opposite. The, 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 the government's actually done fantastically, the finance ministry, over the mm. course of the last 15 years, mm. in keeping us on a steady economic path. Mm. And this country has been exceptionally well managed from a finance perspective. Mm. Um, but what the SNP, the Standard & Poor's rating, is saying, that they're concerned that that's now gone in the wrong direction. Okay. And why they're concerned, it's a bit like if you look at a company. Uh. They've just fired the chairman, the CEO, and the financial director. Yeah. And replaced it with people who don't have the, don't have the experience. So and that's really the issue. I see what you're saying, because if you have a company and there's a, a new CEO coming in, there's kind of a handover period where the old CEO stays on for at least like eight months yeah, to well hand you, over. You breed somebody over years. Oh. And, and today, in fact, the director general, so there's, you know, there's the finance minister, the deputy finance minister, oh. and the director general who actually runs the show day to day, yeah. he said he's leaving at the end of April. Okay. So the top three people in what's effectively the biggest institution in the country the Treasury. have moved on and have been replaced by people who don't have any experience. All right. So I, I read somewhere this morning, and I mean, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, that um, to get back, you know, from being downgraded, it could take two, it's, it takes 10 years, but if you're really good, I mean, like, you know, like in prison, good behavior, hey, if you're really good, it's about seven you years. You get parole. <laughs> <laughs> so you get like seven years. So what, you know, what are we looking at? Because, I mean, it would, it, it would be nice to not be downgraded by Moody's and the other guy, but in the event we do, how do we come back from that, and how long do you think it's going to take so, us? So these are just international people giving us a score. Yeah. What's much more important is that we get our country back on a track from a finance perspective mm. where the man in the street and the poor people and the rich people um, have got a path then a growth company it's a, a growth country it's a country we want our kids to grow up in mm. and economic prosperity helps everybody and everything okay so i need to wrap up but just quickly from your 30 seconds as the normal person what should i be doing should i be holding on to my money should i be safe and i know you you, you help people invest their money so this is pretty much go, you going against your money but tell us like Bit of advice, what's the one thing I must do? So I wouldn't panic, you know, keep a level head. Um, if you've got shares or unit trust, keep them. I mean, the market hasn't taken a dive mm. because the currency is weakened, but a lot of the assets that we own are actually foreign assets mm -hmm. uh, if we're actually in the investment market. Okay. But keep a level head, we'll sort this out. We like you. You, you came here and you gave us sugar water. Keep a level head, we'll sort this out. Polani, I like this. Well, this is part of a real talk that has all South Africans gripped, so I'm very thankful that you could come through. We'll be keeping you posted on everything you need to know to help make your life a little bit easier. After the break, she is the perfect embodiment of the millennial drive, young, hungry for success, and unafraid to dream big. The delightful, gorgeous Nandi Madida is on Real Talk next. She's been performing since the age of four when she was wearing tutus for her ballet performances. As a teen, she participated in a ton of competitions. Her impressive work ethic has only intensified and has seen her leave her mark in music, television presenting, acting, fashion. Now she's a mother. She's annoying me. She's here, Nandi Madida. Listen, I am broken that your surname is not Nandi Bandwini. I didn't know the whole nation was like, ah! Oh! Can't this what guy. do you mean? The whole time I was like, no, her surname is going to be Nandi Bantini. I know, 
And especially in the Eastern Cape, because apparently Bantuin is a Kosa surname, am I right? It's something <laughs> Bantuin, <laughs> something. Eastern Cape is the most hacked. Because we like, like oh, son, oh. What do you mean? I know. Did, I know. W when did you know his surname? Because I mean, <laughs> surely you're allowed to pull out and be like, me, I came here for Bandwin. If I, I mean, <laughs> why am I here? <laughs> that is true. The first time we went to the airport together, I was like, oh. Wow, no, I'm joking. I need to have a long time ago. Oh, when the ID comes out. Yeah, you're like, oh, like, oh, do, oh my oh, data. Call your friends. I'm going to need to be airlifted out of this situation. Get me out of here it now. Is, you know, it's so cool. It's such a small surname, so I feel like I'm representing the Madita. Shout out to you guys watching. But we had a soccer player, wasn't it? Funny, funny Madita, yes, yeah. Yes, but essentially like him and, and Zex. Zex Pantini. Zex Pantini, Madita. Madita, yes. Speaking of names, mm. Nandi, Shaka's mother. Mm. So... Even before your child was a thought, you knew your child's name was going to be Shaga. It is. It may sound crazy, but I was just like, it's just, you know what I love most about Shaga? It's almost like, there's almost this African renaissance once again, where people yeah. are loving their queens and kings here in the continent, uh -huh. like Queen Zinga. And Shaga, for me, has been one of my biggest heroes, personally. Mm -hmm. So I was like, my parents call me Nandi. When I have a son, and I literally said, may I please have a son so I can call him Shaga? And literally. So what happens to the second born? Because you know there's going to be issues. You know what? You I'm better gonna, call him Barack or no, something. Yeah. <laughs> Turn it up. You know, like Nelson. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm hoping, I mean, it doesn't matter what sex I get, but if I get a daughter, uh, uh, she'll be named after my husband's late mom. Which is? Nom Tanda. So, oh, which is just like. Okay. Nom Tanda. Okay. Oh, there we go. Absolutely. You better be a girl. You could yeah. be awkward for a boy walking around yeah. with the name. Nom Tanda. <laughs> so, so I, I was watching so many of your things <laughs> on the internet. Yes. And you're always so profound, right? Thank you. And, and I, I know, you know, me saying that sounds like I'm saying, yeah, pretty girls can't be profound. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know. <laughs> but do you feel like the pressure to be inspirational sometimes? Like, ish, gotta say something that leaves them. No, not at all. I feel the pressure to be honest. And then I think somehow I become profound. But I'm very quirky. And I think a lot of people, I mean, we saw this. You guys didn't see what we were up to. When you're fixing your hair, we went live. Yes, with a book. <laughs> the she whole, literally, yes. look, stop. She literally holds a notebook <laughs> to her head like this to make this, <laughs> yes. like the precision. And that is the truth. The German precision <laughs> on that hairstyle, <laughs> okay? True. And then she, that, that little part here, yeah, she goes like this. Yes, with a Croxley book. Yes, you know the notebook. See the vibes, <laughs> vibes. You got a box with a book. But yeah, I, so I think, I think it's just being honest, and that's uh. what. And then you end up being profound when you're honest. So do you think that people Generally. who enter pageants, because that's how you started. Yes, mm. you did ballet and then you did pageants. Do you think like there's a bit of a stereotype, you, t you all typecast because, you know, it's, it's this like, it looks like it's this, you know, collection, this mm. meeting of empty vessels. Absolutely. I'll be honest. Um, at some point, I had to leave the pageant world. Mm -hmm. That was great, Ten. I mean, I won my last pageant uh, just because you got a free uh, DVD player Girl. in matrix. So I said, okay, I'll re-enter this <laughs> thing. And I got it. I was like, yes! <laughs> I'm ready for tertiary. <laughs> but um, to be very honest, there was, there was a bit of a typecast. And I just yeah. didn't feel mentally or intellectually stimulated per se because uh -huh. you had to be a certain way and also just like you couldn't why can't we come in different shapes and sizes mm. you know different hairstyles different like so that's what also disturbed me a lot and i was finding myself and i was you know all steve beaker mm. with it <laughs> so I was, it wasn't working that's out that's not the pageant no, like, no, not like, at all. absolutely okay mm. but then uh, you were also saying you were telling the story about how you're doing pageants you're like mm. and then i'd win and then i'd win but it looked like you were surprised that you would win pageants. Yes. But I mean, to enter them, you kind of have to have a level of self-awareness that you are beautiful. So why are you surprised you're winning? <laughs> because all these gorgeous girls, oh no, my main reason, shout out to my parents. My parents are not stage parents. So they'd literally be at home like, where are you going? Uh, oh, to that pageant. Okay, good luck. <laughs> and Move on. So the fact, and usually in pageants, like all the parents are there, they're doing their yeah. hair, they're making sure their girls look good. And they, they're looking at their children on stage and they're counting yeah. with them, they're like... One, two, two, three, and yeah. So I never had that. So the fact that I'd actually win was like, what? The one time I came back and I was like, you guys won't believe, we're going to Zimbabwe. My dad's like, yo, this thing is serious. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. So, I mean, your dad's a doctor. Yes. And your mom uh, was a teacher and then she became a lawyer. Yes. Right, so heavy education vibes yes, in that house. Absolutely. And, and then in comes Nandi. She's like, you know what? See that TV? <laughs> Me, I'm me. about the TV life. Yes. What do they say? I'm a typical African child, as in, you know the reaction. And yeah. I feel like this has yeah. been said many a times. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Why? 
Uh -huh. But not so much, it's changed actually. I almost feel like my dad fed also my passion in a strange way. So he mm. was just worried about security, of course, like of any course, parent. Of course, like any parent. But he is the same guy who'd also send me in the studios at 14 years old, uh, like literally paying so much money for me to record songs. So I've been recording songs since I was 14. Oh. I know so many people through. In fact, DJ Clap and my producer, I know, well, DJ Clap from there. Like I've been doing it since I was a kid. So he almost endorsed you know, this passion of mine, but, but at the same time, and, and of course, I mean, if we, I mean, you come from apartheid, my parents come from mm, that background, mm. you know, poverty is here. And also for them, you <laughs> must remember that the, the people who were very talented for them, you know, they didn't see the prosperity Absolutely. in terms of like, you know, legacy and, and the money and the security. We're not like Anele who drives a Porsche. I don't have a Porsche. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I, I don't have one. one. I really? Said. That's interesting. <laughs> Back you know to what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Things have clearly changed, you know. I have a Ferrari. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> But yeah, absolutely, things have changed. So it was justifiable. I mean, my parents loved me, so uh, I knew it was out of love. But I also had to prove to them that um, this is a career you can, where you can sustain yourself uh, uh, and be smart and change lives. Mm -hmm. So yeah. But uh, you also, you know, you're one of the first wave of, of black girls to find themselves in an all-white school. Do you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? How do you hold on to your identity? Because you know, mm. when, you, when you are surrounded by something, you believe, okay, this is how it's supposed to be. Mm. So how do you hold on to your identity in, in belief, in beauty, mm. in, in talent? Mm. In, like, how do you hold on to that when you are surrounded by that? That's a great question. Anneli, you are on fire. This is why the show does so well. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's a great question, and I'll tell you why. Um, you, you almost don't. You, you struggle to find yourself at one stage. I can tell you now in primary school for free. Anyone who knows me from primary school, I was the biggest coconut okay. in primary school. It was literally like... Black on the outside, yes. white on the inside. <laughs> you wanted to be like Casey. And it's funny, I had a friend called Casey. I know, and I, I wanted to be, Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> Your research is amazing. And she was blonde <laughs> and blue-eyed. And I was just like... If I could just be like Casey, yeah. who was a beautiful girl. Hey, Casey. But I wanted to be like her. And here I am, this brown-skinned mm. girl with natural hair. Um, so I tried the relaxers. My hair fell off. I tried everything to try to look like them mm. or try to fit in. Did you do and the put the towel or the jersey in your head? Though? I did it. Okay. And it always <laughs> it felt amazing. <laughs> Until one day, I was just like, what am I doing? But to give credit also, because I have to give credit, uh, it was my sister inspired that, um, uh, and my mom. Yeah. My mom was heavy on the fact that you should love the skin you're in, and my sister was going through her like movements of like, why don't we love the skin we're in? Mm. And my sister's very dark skin, and she's gorgeous. Mm. So it was paramount for her to find herself in her voice. Uh, Is this your younger sister? Yes. The one so that's she's currently modeling now. Me. He's a doctor. She's no, a doctor. she's just really gorgeous that she can model too. Oh. Hey, some people in wow. life. Know, Imagine that can life. Can you believe it? And so, then here's me. Uh, who's wearing a very nice necklace. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, you know at least saying. there is that. Listen, stay with us. You can see we're having fun, right? Nandi Madida will be on the couch again when you get back, so don't go too far. Aha, uh -huh, good, you're back. Now in 2011, Nandi Madida's rise to fame came courtesy of her single Tonight, which was produced by DJ Frankie. Her debut album, Nandi, followed shortly after that. It wasn't just the music that had people talking. Fans could not get over this refreshingly different, natural beauty that Nandi had. And here's the thing, people don't know about the struggle, though. though. <laughs> yeah, the struggle. The struggle, though, yes. okay. I want to talk about mm. you running out of petrol on the road and then you have to call your parents and lie. In fact, it's a few minutes away from here. Really? William Nickel Orfram. Mm. And you know, there's that hill. You, it's that, sure. And I remember... <laughs> and that hill will you make you run out of petrol <laughs> if you're on fumes. <laughs> like if I get, and I, it's, it's a funny story because I was just coming from studio. Uh, broke as hell and uh, I was like no I can make it home if I just a lot of neutral when I go downhill neutral you know what to do she yeah one two tricks. yeah try to get to three and four quickly uh -huh. and um, unfortunately I just didn't have enough gas and literally broke down and literally also broke down were you crying sure no I was close to tears I was too shocked because there was that panic mode it yeah, was in the evening night, yeah you know you're a girl and you have to call home absolutely Durban, and be like guys 
I need help. And Wallet. thank goodness uh, my dad uh, made sure I was an AA member under his name because I was that broke, of course. Okay. Uh, but it was a very surreal, sober moment because it was like, am I taking this too far for what I'm, you know, for my passion? Mm. You know, it was, it was a big moment because, and I actually get emotional where it, it was just a moment where it was just like, is, is it worth it? Because wow. I'm runner up twice and I know what I want to do and I know what I'm about and I want to inspire other girls to be different, mm. you know, to be themselves, to bring something fresh. Because at the time, I just felt like everyone was the same, you know? You say you ran up twice. The first runner up, you were, you were part of the live search. Yes, that, that yes. You, who did you lose to? Mini, who I grew up with. That's, what you're, that's your girl, though. That's my girl. <laughs> Mini is my girl. Yeah. And it's so funny because we were talking to each other the whole time. Like, hey, hey, you made top what was. Yeah, I know. You did. So when am I going to see you? Yeah, I'm coming oh, from wow. Cape Town. So it's, that must yeah. have been so bittersweet. You're just <laughs> yeah. like, no way. Yeah. <laughs> like, you have to have like one emotion. <laughs> Maybe that's where you learn how to act. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, <laughs> Okay. But luckily, I must tell you, before they announced uh, the winner, so yeah. whoever it was going to be, O Access had already called me asking me to audition for them. Okay. So then I was like, you know, if this one doesn't quite... But I'll then just... do you not believe in like the law of physics, the law of attraction, mm -hmm. you know, speaking things and, want, and, and directing your energy? Because, mm. you know, if I was you, but I mean, you're not me, but I'm just saying, if I was, mm. I, would, I would be like, you know, that OXS thing, it distracted me and it kind mm. of uh, activated a, a greedy part of me where I should have mm. been like, you know what, this is it. And then mm. in the event that, then I can pay attention to that. Do you, are you not in that frame of mind? No, I'm so desperate oh. to like make my dreams happen that I'm just like, okay, if this doesn't work, then this one doesn't work. And that was also another problem because part of the universe is believing in the higher power yeah. and I try to control that. Yeah. I was not in that zone. I yeah. was like, I need Because now you're making now. contingency plans for God. <laughs> and I'm you know doing what it on his behalf. Like, hey, God, if, you can't, if this can't work out, you can... And he didn't ask. <laughs> he didn't ask me. He was like, yo, Nandi, yes, in Nalung Sezela, yeah, well. So I'm, I'm literally taking it upon myself to play God, and that's exactly it. Mm. And that's why I failed twice in front of thousands of kids. Like, it didn't have to... I could have been top 15, and no, no. I know. You were like the runner-up queen, hey? <laughs> Listen. Were like, that girl, the one who's always <laughs> the first to lose. <laughs> <laughs> and people were like, oh, go say I'm guys, They're please. Like, you know? So what was struggleful meals? Like, what's like a meal where you're like, oh, I'll never eat that meal again. It just reminds me of not having money. You know, it's funny. I still eat it. Bab and with like butter. Uh -uh. Can go. Bab was five rand back then, guys. <laughs> like, and it lasted you mm -hmm. a week at least. So Bab was my friend for the longest time. And the thing is, um, look, I don't. My parents didn't struggle. They worked very hard. Yeah. We lived, uh, I come from a comfortable life yeah. that my parents worked hard for. I had nothing to do with that. Yeah. So, except for the trip to Zimbali. Hey. Uh, uh, hey. Except for hey. that, thank you. Hey. Shout out. Hey. But um, I must be honest, um, you know, you're in Johannesburg. You don't want to go back home. And home mm. for me is Durban. It's, it's not close. Were your parents throwing those lines at you like, maybe it's time you come home? Yeah, Maybe no, they weren't necessarily, home. but they were tones. But you can hear that, you know, oh. if you're at home, it would be better. If you're, you're at home, home, you'd be having this caviar right yes, now. if you're home, <laughs> and if you became a lawyer, engineer, you know, do you get what I'm yeah. saying? So that kind of tone. But um, so that, it was my ego that got in the way. And I was like, I'd rather stop and mm. make this happen than go back home. So what, when was the, the time where you, you could see a, a turn? Was it like a, pro, a progression of events? Or was it just like one day where you like, okay, I can stay here, something's coming. It actually, funny enough, it wasn't necessarily that, it was the day I actually said, let me let go and let go. Oh. And it was the day I was actually just like, ah, got nothing to lose. This guy better take <laughs> over. Run up twice, <laughs> I'm already a loser. Uh -huh. Do what you gotta do. And that's literally it. But you know why it's not believable? Because yeah. you're like a cute girl, right? <laughs> There's always somebody willing to help a cute girl out. I'm just like, how are you eating pap with butter when you could just call someone uh, and act like you're interested no, and have dinner? You're right, because I had morals and principles. Because uh, I could have gone with some rich Yes, yeah, I mean, girl, yeah, you could have been blessed. Been a long time. <laughs> and that's also, like, psychologically, and thank goodness for my parents, because they instilled morals and principles. I'm seeing girls here driving these cars, living the... And knowing how they, not all of them, yeah. of course, have gotten to that yeah, stage. Yeah, obviously. I was like, ah, uh, no. Yeah, you know when the sun is burning, you're the taxi rank, eh? And listen, it's literally <laughs> and like... you're just like... Whew. You're like, oh, 
to be a housewife now. It wouldn't be bad. <laughs> yeah. Nah, go past high park and say, mm. Mm. But um, yeah, it's my morals and principles that ensured I'd be eating fab for a very long time. Mm. So what's the That's definition so. of your success then? When, when did, you, for, like, for like an artist, it's the first time they hear their song on radio or the first time they win a summer award or the first time they, the, a bigger artist calls them to collab. Mm. For you, in, in your, when you look at the work that you've done, mm. wh which one do you like, wow, okay. You know, I think funny enough, I actually think now doing BET. Mm. Oh, the, the presenting. It just represents everything that I'm about. Uh, we've done something also music related with BET, but uh, yeah. But um, it's because it represents who I am. I'm unique. Yeah. I'm all about like being empowered as a person of color. Yeah. Uh, being daring, doing my thing. And funny enough, when I did Oral Access, I wanted to have a show where I could connect with the diaspora and just travel and. That's what BET is about. You so know, I, had to ask, circle. I had to ask my little sister the other day what this diaspora word is because <laughs> I've heard people use it and very smart people, eh? <laughs> like yeah. diaspora. So am I correct in assuming mm -hmm. it's like just like the African uh, yeah. uh, Oh, you want. absolutely. Okay, okay. So you wanna you wanna be the pan African girl. You don't, absolutely. You don't just wanna exist in South Africa. You want to take it Africa and also the world. So you have Africans. I mean, African Americans, mm. English Africans, Jamaicans, the Caribbean mm. as a whole, wherever Africans are. Of course, because of um, slavery. Slavery. I mean, we like, all we over the world. We didn't have to come here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So the diaspora as a whole. Yeah. Oh, I see yeah. what you're saying. Any That's place the diaspora. across. The, the glow, glow that has bye got bye. an African DNA in them. That's Absolutely. diaspora. That's, and it's, it's strange because it's happened. Uh -huh. uh, where I'll travel somewhere and someone will say, oh my God, I saw your hairstyle and you were wearing this dress. And uh -huh. It was amazing. And because of that, I feel empowered. Because for, for a lot of us, for a very long time, and the story, the narrative is pretty much the same, mm. that uh, we've all been oppressed mm. and didn't love ourselves and mm. our skins and our, mm. the shape, our bodies, or whatever mm. the case may be. So mm. it's... it's the, it's a similar narrative, so you can inspire a lot of people. Do the Americans know that the hairstyle is called Isnandi, though? You know, and chaff not, really. Like, literally, the hair is called... Unfortunately not. There are girls in Durban who go into a salon and they say, Isnandi. Chief, please <laughs> hit me with Isnandi. <laughs> not yet. I'm working on it. <laughs> they need to know. And it's like know. when they say, Kibatla Rihanna. <laughs> you know, some other people say, Nifun Isnandi. Absolutely. Which is ridiculous. Dude. And so surreal. I that think that's an honor. I think it's an honor. So coming up after the break, love, marriage, and a baby makes three for the Madidas. Stay with us. We get personal. Now, if there's one thing fans of Nandi Madida won't find hard to see, it's the beaming eyes when she talks about her family, hubby Zeke Spandrini and her adorable son Shaka, who is such a future forward kid. He's got his own Instagram account. <laughs> okay, okay, I like it. Now, here's something you said. You said uh, your market value is at 10. The more accessible you are, the less it becomes, right? Mm. And I love that. Mm. So I want to know. Mm. Obviously, you're not accessible. No one can get to you. No one can talk to you. How does Ziggs jump, jump on my fans? Eh? Get you know, there's something about a man from Kwama. Okay, Kel. Hood guys. Hey. No, you put it on the real. <laughs> yeah, no. so, eh? Hood guys are wrong. I'm telling you. Yeah. You're like, what did you say? I'm telling you, and you know it also because they've lived life, so they know oh, angles. And because I don't know how, and it wasn't like, it's funny because. I mean, I don't like speaking about my personal life too much, but he was my second boyfriend after like another relationship that I was in for a hundred years. Okay. So, and I was just like, no, I'm not in the mood. I met him at the Sama um, uh, award. They had an announcement. Okay. For the, Sama. the nominee yes, party. The nominee party. Okay. And um, yeah, and I was like, I love your music. I really, I think you're amazing because he is. He's, if not the best performer, one he's of the talented. best performers. He absolutely. Is very talented. So I was being very genuine, and he was like. I love you. And oh. I was like, no, this is not going to work out. <laughs> so when they say love at first sight, oh, you, know. you smiled inside. You're like, oh. No, I, I really didn't. I was like, I'm dying. Okay, <laughs> goodbye. And it was on my birthday, actually. But then later on, I mean, you know how he is. He's such an amazing man and so honest. And so like measured. Absolutely. Right, very measured. And yes. Tatala Yes. All right. So yes. later on, what? He SMSs you, he DMs you, he 
sees you at the summers now. Yeah, well, no, well, funny enough, it was more like career talk. And he was the guy who was helping me. If you've noticed, actually, my career literally went on a trajectory once oh. I, I met him because he was guiding me. He literally was like, what do you need? Do you need a team? Do you need this? It's not the reason, obviously, why I ended up being with him, but he, someone who cared so much yeah, that's and love. was willing to invest yeah, in me, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And he was like, no, it's fine. You don't have to date me. Because but also, think about it. Mm. He's in the public eye, right? So he could stifle it. And Absolutely. Be like, you know, you just be the pretty woman next to me. Absolutely. But in his mind, it's like your success is everything to him. So it's, it's, it's quite a remarkable thing. That Absolutely. Is. So I, I owe him a lot. It's almost like Celine Dion and her husband, actually. Only well, you won 12 yes. and Zex was wasn't 38. I was just about to say. <laughs> okay. So let, Can let's we just share. clear that well, up? let's say Beyonce and Jay-Z. Okay. How she became more business-minded. Oh, okay. Minded. More, you thank go. you. Okay. Actually, let's, let's make it. <laughs> okay. Because I'm just like Celine Dion. Mm. <laughs> that is also true. It's a bit beautiful. But, but absolutely, where there's an edge. Mm. In fact, especially guys from... Also, because he's seen life. He's made plenty of mistakes. Mm. He's, he's, I mean, he's seven years older than me, so he's seen a lot it's more a life, you know? Uh, no, absolutely. It's a great age gap. No, it is yeah. a great age gap, especially for men. Mm. <laughs> but, <I'm, laughs> but he's, and because of that, he's guided me throughout so much. And that's the reason why you see my career is polished. And yeah. trust me, I have a great man back me up. All right. So mm. is he part of your management team or does he kind of want the report back from you? Yeah, he's just my husband. Who, oh, like, just gives me how advice. did he become your husband? I just fell in love, you know. No, um, I always knew that I was I was gonna end up marrying this but, guy. But okay, because you guys look like. Because mm. I was watching you guys, we were at Robert's yes, uh, uh, surprise birthday, birthday party. party yeah. And I was watching you guys, I'm like, there's such a, like a, a great communication between the two of you mm. that when I was writing this question down to ask you how he asked you to marry him, mm. I was like, you know, this to strike me like, it wasn't like a, you know, <laughs> will you marry me? Yes, it was like a, like a discussion. Like, <laughs> you guys made an appointment to me, we were like, <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> you're like, okay, so, what you bringing, what, what am I bringing, you know? <laughs> Funny enough, yeah. actually, it was like at some point. It was point, like a conversation. It was, which is funny. Wow, you're that's impressive. It was very much like, okay, well, we've been dating for quite some time, and well, on, on, on Zex, Zex has been wanting to marry me since day one, since yeah. he met me. We and told you he loves you. We, yes, we know. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. But uh, at some point, I was just like, I can actually see this happening. All right. Yeah. But he obviously he had to prove himself, and I had to see what was going on. Okay. Uh, you know, because uh, you don't want to be easy as a lady. You want to see that uh, he's the real deal. But I knew, I knew that this guy is, is the man for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Shaka comes along. Oh. Um, you know, being a parent is like a it's like a magnifying glass on you. So all your character traits become magnified. Mm. What part of yourself has your son magnified? Smiling, he smiles all okay. the time, and so then, then you smile absolutely okay. all the time. And he's just, he's just oh, well, wow. so, look yeah. at his parents, look, and it's definitely not. No, but you see, dad is <laughs> only on stage, you know how yeah. he is, he's very mellow. Mom is 24 7. I mean, you know the saying, the apple didn't fall too far from the tree. Absolutely. This apple is still on the tree. Oh, no, absolutely. And he is so loved. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, but, he's, but he's got like this, uh, the, your eyes, both yes. your eyes, like the alive nature yes. of your eyes. And for Zex, I mean, you know, men change a lot when they become like fathers. And he's already a father. And I yes, know you've got a really good relationship with his firstborn, absolutely. who's the gentleman as well, yes, you know? Yes. So for you, watching him uh, have Shaka in, 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 in your guys' lives, you know, what's. You know, what upgraded about him? What lifted about him? You know, first of all, I have to say something. Um, that was another thing that I loved about Zach, seeing him as a father. You yeah. know, we have a blended family. In fact, his daughter was supposed to do my makeup, but unfortunately she was busy with school. Okay. Um, and, okay. But, and, and that was also a beautiful thing too, to see him, that side of him, which a lot of people don't know. Oh. And so, and Shaga's loved his family. He yeah. is so loved. But I love the fact that I saw this man who, you know, he, you know, you have this guy from Make Us, mm. but it's so loving, mm. you know what I'm saying, as a father, and that was important to me. So you have to understand also at the same time, I'm a suburban girl, mm. he's this guy from the hood, and like he said, he's like, hey, I've got scars, hey, I'm already a dad, mm. and I wasn't married, mm. you know? But, and that dynamic somehow, we taught each other different things, because he didn't really get guidance, 
you know, uh, which is a typical story, obviously, for a lot of guys. Yeah, a lot of know, like black men. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's so important for him. I know he always speaks about this, especially with Ushaga, that he won't make the same mistakes I did. Mm. And so I come from a family who absolutely loves him, but almost also guides him too, mm. uh, you know, I, to being that better man. I remember you were yeah. saying when your mom first met him, she was like, which school did you go to? <laughs> <laughs> you were like, Ngaba <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Ngaba <laughs> Shout out to, but like, as a suburban kid, I was like, what's her name again? Ngaba. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. So what's your issue with turning 30? Because I, I saw this one interview you did, you're like, ah, oh, turning 30 soon. Oh. You know what, I, I, I don't have an issue now. Okay. I guess because I'm a mother. Mm, mm. But I, I remember 30 always being old and I don't want to change that. I know, right? It is, it's just grown. Do you know and when then, you were like young, you're like, yo, those 30 year olds. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's those like, old people. You can't dodge it, you can't hide behind it. It, it's grown. You are now grown. You can't hide behind the fact that you're young and you uh. made these mistakes. You're a grown person. But thankfully, I'm a mother too. So now, because I'm a mother, I actually look forward to turning 30. Okay, so it calmed you down a bit. How old are you yeah, now? I'm 29. When, when's your still birthday? Still spring chicken. To turn 30? <laughs> um, next year. Next year. Okay. So, so still I mean, a year. Is there anything you've written down, I must have this before I'm 30? Because, I mean, you've got the child, you've got the house, you've got the car, you've got the herbs. Yeah. You know, what, you know, because people have those lists, even if it's like subliminal in their minds, it's like something that they would like to do before they're 30. You know, I don't want to give you a pageant answer, uh, but I'm not going to play God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to play God. <laughs> But honestly, also, um, I'd like to take my career to the next level. Uh -huh. So I've been doing a lot of, um, you know, like a new team, traveling. I'll be very honest. So that's, that's something. I just want to inspire my kid when he's like, yo, my yeah. mom's cool. But did, did your child not make you a harder worker? Because I know that's what happened with me. I just like, I thought I used to work hard. I thought, and then I was like, yo, this kid is going to be like, yo, mama, fat. That is so, <laughs> in fact, when I was pregnant, yeah. I was like working nonstop. I was like, I have to have yes, my clothing I line. you were at the launch of the show and you were like about to give birth. <laughs> like other paramedics here. <laughs> Stole's about to That's break her water. Absolutely. And also uh, the fact that I was like, my clothing line is something I've always wanted to do. Mm. Uh, you know, BETs, I'm going to do. The, I didn't even tell anyone I was pregnant then. No one knew. Good girl. Yeah, thank you. Because people worry, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're just pregnant. We're healthy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I did so much. And I think... There's something about having a human being in your body. I don't know um, if you don't have any health issues yeah. per se, but you feel fearless because it's, it's like a like, superpower, right? You're like, this is a factory, right? Right now, as you said, I'm making an arm, <laughs> <laughs> making a finger, and as I'm making you're watching. a leg. <laughs> yeah. Now, don't forget that we're running our new weekly competition. That's the 5,000 rand e gift card every week, courtesy of at home and you can enter following the details that you see on your screen right now we'll be back after the break <laughs> i'm making an arm <laughs> And we're back with Nandi Madida. I must just say that your tweets are going to make me very unprofessional. This is why I'm <laughs> laughing my head off. So, hey, thank you so much for making us trend in the top 10. Hashtag Real Woo! Talk with Anele. Make sure you keep on tweeting. Tweeting. Woo! Bantu Education came back from me, hey? Uh, and then Ooh. someone says, Zakes is lucky to have Nandi. Aww. Aww. Look at, she blushes when she speaks about him. Uh, at LA Black wants to know, what do you say about being once compared to Bonang? That's an interesting question. Mm -mm. Um, the fact that we'd even be compared is more interesting because we're so far apart. Different. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, and uh, it's good to address this. A lot of, you know, ladies in television always get compared. And that's even an issue we have, I mean, you know, even abroad. Yes. Uh, and yeah, uh, and it's sad because I feel like we're all different and have our own things going on. And it ends up making us competitive, which is something I've never and wanted it, to endorse. it ends yeah. up making it look like you guys have issues with each other Absolutely. when you don't. Yep. So now you get to a function mm. and then, you know, this lady you've been compared to, be it Bonang, be it Mini, mm. be it Lerado Khanyago, be it anyone. Mm. Now, all of a sudden, there's this unspoken beef between the two of you. Yeah. And then you're just like, 
what is the vehicle? What is fueling this? And it's just, it's this comparison. Oh, yes. Because they never compare the men. No, never. I've never heard anyone say, no. oh, who's better between Lawrence and Lunga? Mm. Oh, do you know what I'm saying? They it's never compare the men, but it's the women that are treated like horses. Go to Devon, July there. You <laughs> must compare <laughs> if it's lightning star that's going to come first or picket fence. Yep. No, I totally hear you. Yeah. And then lots of tweets coming through saying that they love you. Thank you so much for coming on to the chair. Oh, I love you too. At which Thank point, you. I want to talk about your career now, because you said... Um, you want to take it up a level. Mm. You know, you acted on the road. Mm. and it With won your sister, a, shout out. My sister, hey, Tessa. Uh, <laughs> and it won us after. Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? So obviously that's kind of like a feather in your hat. Absolutely. Because you were one of the leads in a stellar cast. Mm. Right? What can you say you learned from them? What can you wear? And, you know, I, I know Temandaba was on there. Oh. I know the guy with the good jerseys. Um, Mutuli was there. Well, briefly. Oh, Mamnandi. Mamnandi. Like legends. Yeah. Sure, so many people. Um... I learned everything because uh. that, first of all, the cast is my family. Shout out to the road. They know I love them so much. In fact, I saw Sta last weekend. We were mm. hanging out. Uh, but I was going to say that, um, sure, it taught me everything. Wow. I had to cry. Like, okay, and three, two, one, and. <laughs> oh, wow. And be, wow. I have to kill you. Oh, like, wow. The tears are really coming no. out. <laughs> no. No, no. Yeah. No, they, no, but I'm glad I got you. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. Literally, method acting on the spot. Mm. Um, it also taught me how to work with a huge cast mm -hmm. and we're family and the, the dynamics of that. Luckily, for some odd reason, and I always say this, you know this because of your sister, there was no beef. Like, we all got along. It was a beautiful, was, like, hey. from the outside, it looked like you guys were all sharp with Absolutely. each other. Absolutely, we so we were lucky in that way. Uh, but also, just like... You got a script literally on the day mm. and being a lead and I've never done this. Mm. And all of a sudden I have to look at the script and then act a certain way and be crazy and cry and it was something And be a else. murderous, yes. sneaky person. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I must say, um, sure, shout out to my husband also who like helped me also because like, I was a kulumisulu. You know, Manzuna, I'm not going to know how to translate what ah, this kind of, okay. <laughs> like, he's deep. Okay. So he helped me with so much also, just like, okay, Stanley Sam, you know, you need to say this and that. So it was very challenging. I don't know, it pushed me, but that's why I can take on anything. Mm. And that's why I'm ready to take my career to the next level, because that was an experience and a half. Okay, oh, acting, yeah. presenting, mm. uh, fashion. And music. And yeah. music. Which one speaks to you the most? Strangely enough, it's music. What is it saying to you? What it's saying what to me saying to you? is, can I be honest? Um, because I love it so much, I've taken a step back. Mm. Um, people always like, you know, like the song you did with Kent did really well. Why aren't you like pursuing this? Kind of love did well love. with Kent. Oh, why aren't you? And I'll be very honest, there's too much politics in music. You heard of Ricky. Of course there is. <laughs> so yeah. I'm being very honest where I just don't want to be, you know, it's different from television. You come on set, yeah. you do your thing, you yeah. go home. Yeah. And so I'd like to do it on another level and that's what I've been busy with. I was in LA mm -hmm. uh, recording with the legendary John Lind who's worked with Earth, Wind & Fire, Sher, Madonna. Wow. So that's what I've been doing, uh, trying to, you know, do it somewhere else because I, I I still want to love music. It's the thing I love most. And you love yeah. performing. Absolutely. You love on, on stage, mm. you know, mm. you, you really come alive. And I think mm. that it's such an injustice to people who, who've just heard you on radio and, yeah. and they haven't seen you mm. when you are on stage. I think mm. like another force takes over. Yeah. And I've said no to so many gigs. Yeah. Because of that, I really genuinely, and maybe I'm a bit of, I don't know if I'm a coward for saying this or, it's just I love it too much to get into the politics of okay. not being played, being played, being on a video, whatever. Mm, a mm. DJ is not wanting to play it, wanting to, like, I, d I just don't want to. I love it too much, yeah. And I'm making a great living doing everything else. Everything else. Yeah. So you said that, uh, you said this in 2016, you said you, you, have, you are not scared of your dreams any longer. No. So like, I, I don't know, because sometimes you don't want to tell your dreams to people. Like, but what's the, before you fall asleep, like the, the two seconds before you, you enter the deep sleep, you know, that, that thing you think about then that you want to achieve, that's what, you know, mm. you know, keeps you going. What is that thing? I want to inspire the world, man. Specifically how? Because you can't just say, I'm going to inspire the world. What, are you going to create a line of these, these nice little baskets here? What? what? With my flavor. <laughs> With Put my a flavor. finger. 
<laughs> no, with our, what I've been doing since I was literally four years old, and that's the arts. Uh. And it's funny. In fact, one of your friends who's inspired the whole country, continent, and world, yeah. Trevor Noah, yeah. was on a show after my show on SCBC2 when I was in, on a kid's show at Blink. 15. I was on Blink. Yeah. He was on Run the Adventure. Yes, he was on a show called Run the Adventure with an Afro. <laughs> that was Trevor Noah. Which he would sometimes make on roll. Make roll. Yeah. Shout out. But the fact that he knew where he wanted to go. Uh, that inspires me too. It's like, I remember this guy with a fro. Yeah. And I look at him. And, and, it's, and people also don't understand that we, like, we've been at it since mm. we were kids. Do you know what? Um, now that you bring Trevor up, I think what people, do, and we can speak, you know, grandly about him. Mm. But what people don't realize is that he was specific. He, you know, he, so mm. he'd say, I, I want to host a show. Mm an international show. Mm. I want to be at the Sydney Opera House doing comedy. Mm. I want to be, you know, at the Apollo. I that's want to it. perform. Do you know, I think, you know, that's the thing about him, he was specific. And I mm. think if you're specific, those things come to you. Yes. So, be specific. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's just... Uh, okay, first of all, I'll be specific with something that did come to you, that I wanted to be a mother in my late 20s. Okay. But, um... You know, I don't like telling people about my dreams. I know, that's what I said earlier. Yeah, but, but to but yourself, do you know what to us? I'm just okay. saying, like, me and oh, you yeah. leaving each other and going our separate ways now. Be specific. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Because uh, you oh, know what? Yeah. It gives you razor vision. And you know what? I have been specific. Okay, good. And it's all, like, coming together. It's all coming last together. Last year was a... So I want to see what your state of mind is in terms <laughs> of music. <laughs> in the last year, yeah. give me a song, and I'll ask every musician this. In the last year, give me a song that you've heard, and every time it plays, you're a little bit envious because you're like, oh, I should have written that song. That is a Nandi song. Uh, Local and international. It's Kanye West's whole album. Oh, the one, the, the one with Pablo. famous. Yes. Oh, yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, local. Oh, there's too many. Ah, uh, local. Oh, man, there's too many. Um, oh, I hate choosing local because there's too many. Besides now, Tandy Somazwa, who I absolutely love. Okay, okay. Uh, Valete. Uh, Kent. Kent, yes, yes. Kent's was... amazing. Yes, I worked with him, but yeah. um, you know what I love about Kent's sound and also Kent, he's just doing his own thing, man. Okay, I've got thirty seconds. Mm. If you had to write a song for Zegs, what's it called? <sighs> love you forever, <laughs> <laughs> and I do. Okay, listen, yeah. listen. <laughs> you and your pretty necklace. Thank you so much for coming <laughs> to join us. Look, this Thank necklace, you. apparently it broke and then she fixed it quickly. Listen, this is what people don't know. It broke and we've taped it this whole live show. Don't you love live TV? There's a situation. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you so much to my guest, the adorable Nadim Goma Madida. She is slaying, yes I said slaying, and showing us that maybe, just maybe, we can have it all. <laughs>